Please be seated. The President, uh, now the, we resume the session for uh, the initial hearing. Next, I would like to uh, give the floor back to Judge Silver Catray to lead uh, the discussion. You have the floor now. Thanks. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, President. Ms. Stojinski, I would like to return to our discussion uh, concerning witness A, uh, sorry, CP28 or A07 and CP29. In response to some questions put to you by Judge Laverne, you seemed to indicate that there was a reference to uh, witness CP28's uh, imprisonment at S21 in a book. Is that what you intended to indicate? Could you give me the precise reference, please? The name of the book and the reference. Your Honours, I would like to um, provide the Chamber um, as soon today, uh, after this session, provide with this uh, information. Can I ask one further question then? Is the book to which you refer the record of an earlier uh, investigation? It is and, a, and the witnesses who were called during that uh, period? It is a witness statement uh, in this book. Well, I just need to indicate that if we have the same witness statement, we can find no reference to uh, such imprisonment in that witness statement. As I said, I will provide the Chamber with the information later on. Thank you. I would like to have it uh, before we uh, return to court in the morning, please, Ms. Studzinski. Thank you. I'm now going to turn to the witness list of Civil Party Group 3, which is res uh, represented by Kim Menke, Mok Savanari, Martin Jacquin, Eli, uh, Annie Delahaye, uh, and uh, further lawyers yet to be recognized. On the 20th of January 2009, the lawyers for this Civil Party Group 3 filed a witness list and a further witness list yesterday, uh, the 16th of February, in both Khmer and French. They also filed summaries of the facts to which each proposed witness and expert is expected to testify, and the list of new documents they intend to offer in the case. The first list filed by this group of civil parties contains two proposed witnesses they wish the Chamber to summon at trial. Both witnesses are identified by name and a number. No protective measures have been sought for these two witnesses. The Chamber will use the pseudonym Witness CP31 and Witness CP32 for the witnesses on this list. The second list contains one proposed witness identified by her name. She will be identified by pseudonym witness CP33. The Chamber has not had time yet to review this list before today's initial hearing. 
The lawyers of uh, Group 3 estimate that a minimum of approximately 20 minutes will be required for the testimony of the witnesses on their list. Uh, and in a direction requesting additional information, dated the 5th of February 2009, the Chamber invited the defence to indicate whether it contests the facts that witnesses CP31 and CP32 of the above-mentioned list proposed to testify about. On the 12th of February, the Chamber received notification from the defence that it does not contest the facts that these witnesses proposed to testify about. The Chamber would now like to give the parties an opportunity to make any additional observations on the witness list of Civil Party Group 3, uh, and Civil Party Group 3 will have an opportunity to reply after all observations have been concluded. Do the co-prosecutors have any comments? None at this time, thank you. Thank you. Do any other civil parties have any comments to make regarding the witness list of civil party group three? Um, Mr. Khan. Uh, Your Honour, no, not on behalf of uh, my, my group. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Any other civil party lawyers have any observations? None? Thank you. Uh, does the defence have any comments to make regarding the witness list of civil party group three? Mr. Rue. J'attendais. Mr. Rue, I was waiting for the interpretation to finish. Please forgive me. The defense merely wishes to confirm what it wrote to the chamber, that is, that it does not intend to challenge the facts about which the witnesses wish to testify in respect of a victim whose name I shall not call out, but of which the Chamber is aware. The defense stated that it was well aware that if this victim made statements in S21, it must have done so under torture. So the defense do does not wish to challenge the fact that this witness who died in S21 did so under torture. And if the witness implicated anybody, it, the, she would necessarily have done so under torture. And therefore, there is no reason to attach any value to a statement taken under torture. The defense, therefore, confirms that it does not challenge the testimony of these witnesses which, which may not be indispensable because they are coming after all from very far to give testimony for 10 minutes only about matters that are not in dispute although of course the, the defense wishes to register its respect for the two witnesses with regard to the second list the Chamber has been in a better position than the Defence because the Defence is yet to receive the second list. Yes, thank you. Uh, is there any comment that uh, lawyers for Civil Party Group 3 wish to make in response? Nothing? Yes. Oui, Madame le Président, nous vous remercions de... Ms. Jacquin, thank you for giving us the floor. We emphasize the calling of these two witnesses because we consider that these two witnesses who agreed to come and testify in person are in a position to provide information to the chamber and to shed light on the matters that the court is dealing with in a non-negligible fashion. They are in a position to give testimony that goes to a fact which was not dwelt on at length in the investigation because it seemed obvious. However, I think every point should be elucidated to determine whether it is true or false because if the facts pertaining to some points were in, are real, 
then it would shed a different light on some of the other counts. It could put a totally different construction on facts. A number of the charges were completely unreal and these witnesses will change that. They will give us a view of the importance of how this affected the circumstances in S21. What we expect from these witnesses is to find out the reality. It is obvious that we discover, as we discovered in these documents that these two people would be able to shed light and provide accuracy even if they come from afar they will shed light on an important point both for the survivors and the civil parties that is they will know the realities that underpin some of the charges I would also like to say that we might well submit an additional list of three or four witnesses. Yes, thank you, uh, Ms. Jacquin. Uh, I was about to note that you um, still have until the 4th of March to uh, submit any further uh, witness lists, and from your comments, I infer that you are not waiving that right. Thank you. The witness, uh, the witness list of Civil Party Group 4 is the next matter. Civil Party Group 4 is represented by Hong Kim Swan and Pierre-Olivier Sieur. The Chamber has not received any witness list from this group and its deadline uh, to file a witness list uh, expired on the 16th of February 2009. I turn now to the witness list for the defence. The defence filed its witness list on the 27th of January 2009 in Khmer and French. In addition, it filed summaries of the facts to which each proposed witness and expert intends to testify and a list of new documents it intends to offer in the case. The list filed by the defence contains 13 proposed witnesses it wishes the Chamber to summon at trial. All of the witnesses are identified by their name and a number. Eight of these witnesses are character witnesses. Five are expert witnesses. No protective measures have been requested for any of the witnesses but the Chamber will in the meantime use the pseudonym Witness D with an assigned witness number for all witnesses on this list. The defence estimates that a minimum of 23 hours and 15 minutes, which amounts to approximately four and a half trial days, will be required for the testimony of the witnesses on their list. The Chamber now wishes to give the parties the opportunity to make uh, observations on the defence witness list. Do the co-prosecutors have any comments to make regarding the defence witness list? Ms. Che Liang. Che Liang, the co-prosecutor. Thank you, Madam Judge. At this time, the co-prosecutors would like to rest our remarks on the list of the co-lawyers of the accused, which the co-lawyers submitted to the trial chamber judges. In general, the, the co-prosecutors think the, the witnesses are not relevant to the charges made by the prosecutors. Secondly, the, most of the witnesses are character witnesses for the accused. 
from the uh, from his child plus until he is adult, his adulthood. Third, other witnesses uh, just wish to clarify it for the leniency of the sentences for the accused. Due to the testimonies uh, intended to be made by the witnesses on the character of the accused, which consume a number of days of the court uh, days, and at this stage we have a number of witnesses, so we need to consider to select important witnesses to provide testimony during the trial particularly to select the witnesses which are relevant to the charges made by the prosecutors. This is uh, the remark uh, by the prosecution, and I would like the trial chamber judges to decide on this issue. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Do any of the civil par Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Petit? We'll have to get used to this uh, I will. up and down musical parties. Um, to uh, clarify, as my colleague says, obviously uh, the trial chamber will have to keep in mind the uh, amount of time uh, required to properly assess all the relevant evidence. Uh, and in so doing, we'll assess the need for testimonies um, Obviously, we understand uh, and has been announced from uh, the very beginning that uh, the defense intends to bring forth evidence, as my colleague rightly pointed out, that uh, relate to an eventual sentence of the uh, accused. Hence, the character witnesses or the witnesses identified from 1 to 8 or D1 to D8. Um, as to the witnesses identified from D9 to D13, uh, I would note uh, a couple of uh, points or have a few observations. First of all, all these witnesses are qualified by the defense as expert witnesses. Now, in different jurisdictions, the terms means different things. Uh, I think common thread, though, throughout those definitions is that to be qualified as an expert, a witness must be able to bring to the trier of facts an expertise that the chamber cannot otherwise have. And having been assessed as an expert, in other words, having established the factual basis, the professional and personal experience that qualifies this person to render opinion, can do so and have those opinions uh, taken into consideration for the chamber, by the chamber. I leave it to your discretion uh, to evaluate uh, if the witnesses identified as expert witness uh, from D9 onwards do indeed qualify to as expert before this chamber according to criteria that uh, it will no doubt establish and we obviously stand ready to assist in that uh, establishment of appropriate criteria for this court to be qualified as an expert. I particularly would uh, question uh, the expertise of witness D13, uh, whose sole apparent relevance, uh, as described very summarily uh, in the defense filing, uh, would indicate that she would talk about the road to reconciliation. I note that obviously one of the purposes of this court is to promote reconciliation in Cambodia. I would personally, and I think professionally, and all of us would, welcome expert opinion on the Cambodian context of reconciliation and how this court fits within it. Perhaps that expertise is not available, hence the choice of the defense uh, of these various experts, from some from far-flung destinations indeed. Um, I would, however, raise one precise point as to the expertise of witness D12 in specifically his qualification 
to be able to render any kind of opinion, and I quote the last phrase or the last part of the description given by the witnesses, that this witness would speak to, I quote, the impact of such a system on human behavior, unquote. I am not aware of any material supporting this person's expertise in human behavior, psychology, sociology, or any of the other related fields. I do not question that this individual has studied the factual context and can render assistance to the trial chamber and to the parties about that context of the crimes committed during the DK era. I will, however, question that expert's, that person's ability to testify as an expert on human behavior. And obviously, we'll intend to do so if that person will be called as a witness. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Petit. Now, uh, in, do any of the civil parties have any um, comments that they wish to make with regard to uh, the witness list of the defence? Mr. Khan? Uh, I'm grateful, Your Honour. I, I will not uh, address you on the issue of uh, expert witnesses uh, that's just been referred to by my learned friends for the prosecution. But uh, generally speaking, it's my respectful submission that uh, the list assembled by the defence appears to have been very carefully considered, uh, is focused, uh, and indeed in a case of this type, for a defence case to uh, take up only four days, is a matter I think that my learned friends for the defence deserve to be applauded for. Uh, Your Honours, uh, those are my only submissions, and on behalf of my civil party, we look forward to hearing those witnesses uh, come before the court uh, and uh, speak to Your Honours. Thank you, Mr Khan. Lawyers for any of the other civil parties? Mr. Sieur? Madame Le. Mr. Sieur, Your Honour, I waived calling with witnesses for Group 4 of the civil parties for the following reason. And then I shall move on to the point at issue now. The reason is that the accused has fully acknowledged the facts. And in support of the prosecution, it did not seem to us, the civil parties who are in second place, as it were, it did not seem to us necessary to call witnesses or factual witnesses. The civil parties are not interested in the sentence as such. Judge Lavegne recalled a while ago, or made reference to point 23.1, which defines civil party action. First, support the prosecution and request reparations. But the civil parties are interested in the character of the accused, his previous character, his character during the period under this court's jurisdiction, and his character now, which is why we support the witness list as presented by the defense lawyer, both with regard to what he said at the beginning when he requested that his client be the subject of another psychological exam and with regard to his character based on the character witnesses that he wishes to call with respect to the period preceding the events. Uh, thank, Honor, with, with, thank you, Mr. Sewer. Mr. Khan? Your Honor, with your indulgence, I, I'm not going to address uh, the points put forward by my learned friend, uh, Mr. Sir. Uh, suffice it to say that the position of civil party number one uh, is somewhat different uh, to the position advanced by my learned friend in relation to civil party number four, as of course is evidenced by the witness list and the experts that we have put before your honours for consideration. Your honours, I don't intend uh, to rehash or to go into detail as to our position 
Of course, Your Honours may be interested or not in relation to why uh, a witness list was not filed by Civil Party No. 4. But, Your Honours, for the record, um, the position of Civil Party No. 1 as to the scope of Civil Party uh, participation is different with the greatest of respect to that that has just been adumbrated. Um, there's, there's no uh, necessity for us to have identical positions. Um, but I thought it was just appropriate to say on this particular issue at least there is some daylight uh, in our respective positions. I'm grateful. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Uh, Council, uh, Mr. Hong Swan, have I got the correct look. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hong Kong Swan. As the uh, national lawyer along with the international lawyers, we know that the right to include uh, witness list is uh, exercised through the direction requesting for uh, the uh, list of witnesses uh, to be submitted. And uh, the reason that uh, Mr. Su did not request for uh, uh, any additional witnesses. I think uh, I support uh, the co-prosecutor concerning the character of witnesses because uh, in this case file it is more about the uh, forensic uh, or psychological uh, forensic uh, evidence and we need experts uh, and only when we add uh, uh, witnesses to recall the historical background of uh, a, uh, an accused, uh, for example, concerning his uh, childhood, uh, I think uh, we probably add uh, more unnecessary witnesses into the list. Uh, and, uh, I think uh, so far as I remembered in the last uh, trial management meeting, uh, there would be 40 days uh, required uh, for hearing uh, those witnesses and to add uh, more witnesses, I'm afraid that the uh, trial hearing would uh, be delayed uh, further. So. Uh, if the witnesses are not really the real experts and that the testimony would not be uh, uh, relevant, uh, so I would like to leave it uh, to your discretion to uh, uh, reduce these numbers of witnesses uh, because uh, Cambodian people have been waiting for uh, several years already uh, to see uh, the beginning of uh, the substantive hearing. So we want only witnesses who really witnessed uh, the suffering uh, directly in those regime who actually can testify against uh, or about the uh, roles of the child, uh, the accused uh, during the regime. And I think it would be wiser to include such uh, witnesses. So uh, I wish that uh, the chamber reduce uh, witnesses who are only purely character witnesses. Thank you, Mr. Hong Kim Swan. Now, no other civil parties wish to comment, in which case I will invite the defence to respond. Uh, Mr. Hu. Thank you, Your Honour. This is an interesting discussion. It is interesting to hear the positions, the varying positions taken by some of the civil parties and the Office of the Co-Prosecutors. I would like to buttress my observations on two points. The texts and jurisprudence. With regard to the texts, I will make reference first to Article 116 of the Cambodian Criminal Code, which I would like to respectfully bring to the attention of my colleague 
on the other side. So as I was saying, Article 116 makes provision for the punishment under law for crimes. And it says that punishment should be converted or reduced depending on the age of minority or the senility of the person who has been found guilty and that sentencing can further be can be further reduced if it is decided that there are mitigating circumstances in the case The other text to which I wish to make reference is the statute of the Nuremberg Court in, we, in whose Article 8 it is provided and I would add that this is one of the basis of what is now known as transitional justice It says, the fact that the accused acted in accordance with instructions issued by the accused's government or a superior does not absolve the accused of his or her responsibility. However, it may be considered in mitigation of the sentence if the court decides that it is in the interests of justice. I refer to a mitigating circumstance which might arise either because of the character as was recalled or mentioned by the civil parties or depending on the context as one of our expert witnesses will indicate. Furthermore, the other foundational aspect is that of doctrine, as I was saying. And here I would like to recall what has been written about transitional justice and in particular for the French speakers who might be interested may I refer them to the book of Pierre Hazan H-A-Z-A-N is uh, this gentleman's name H-A-Z-A-N it's called Judging War, Judging History Juger la guerre, Juger l'histoire this book recalls uh, the foundations of transitional justice and uh, in this context it says the following on page 12 and I quote a crime against humanity by its very essence unbinds humans but transitional justice seeks to accomplish the reverse journey, that's to say, restoration of the link that uh, rebinds humans within society towards the refoundation of a of a polity. And furthermore, on page fifty three. And I quote, reconciliation demands that both victims and perpetrators manage to accept the past rather than consider the past to be just a mere foreshadowing of the future. It requires that they be in a position to, to, to perceive the humanity of the other. 
that they accept each other and that they be capable of contemplating the possibility of a constructive, positive relationship. And lastly, page 102, I quote, transitional justice has one key co word or concept, which is truth, justice, forgiveness, reconciliation. This is one key formula. I end my quotes at, the, at this point. I don't think the defense has, when it suggested a list of only 13 witnesses, only four and a half days worth of uh, hearing time, and thank you very much uh, for having noted this when, in fact, the other side is uh, requiring 40 days of, witness, of testimonies for a, an accused who pleads guilty and who seeks forgiveness. So let's, let's put our attention where it is required. Consequently, the defense believes that the witnesses that we wish to summon, and in particular, those whom we consider to be expert witnesses. We think that these witnesses should enable us to go to the very core of what we're about here, which is seeking justice in transi transitional justice. And on this issue of expert witnesses, I would like uh, to say to my uh, distinguished contradictor, Mr. Robert Petit, that, once again, we are not in a common law system where experts are summoned to justify under pressure in a, a, a cross-examination system. They are not supposed to justify and to, uh, and to, to, to account for merits and demerits. Uh, I'm aware of this system. I've experienced it in the Musawi uh, trial in the USA, where we spent two hours before a witness could justify. It took him two hours to justify that he was an expert. Please let us avoid the meanders of this kind of debate, which in this particular place would be totally sterile, useless. The only thing that the chamber needs to verify is whether the expert witnesses who will appear before this chamber, whether these people do indeed, uh, are indeed highly ethical uh, persons and uh, whether their known experience and expertise um, does qualify them to offer truly authoritative testimony. Our expert witnesses have uh, indicated to us that uh, they had no difficulties uh, with my mentioning them, their names, mentioning their names, so that I can publicly say that I frankly don't imagine who might possibly want to come and challenge the quality and expertise of Professor Henry King. Uh, former prosecutor at the Nuremberg Tribunal. Who would wish to challenge this person and to bar him from uh, te giving testimony here? Similarly, who would challenge uh, the uh, credentials uh, of Richard Goldstone, who was uh, a prosecutor at international tribunals, who will talk about the admission of guilt and talk about the sanctions already handed down in cases of uh, accused pleading guilty in other jurisdictions. The um, competence, the expertise of uh, His Excellency Ambassador Stéphane Essel, who is now 91 years old, one of the drafters of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, who was deported in the Buchenwald camp, 
who on earth might challenge his right and expertise as a person who can speak for reconciliation here. Marie-Claude Chibaou, a widow of uh, the Kanak freedom movement leader, Jean-Marie Chibaou, who would deny this uh, woman the right to speak about reconciliation when uh, this woman has uh, suffered in her flesh and in her spirit the mur of the consequences of the murder of her husband. Undoubtedly, this is Cambodia, and uh, the tragedies experienced by humans know no borders. The trajectories of people here and there to develop resilience, uh, these trajectories are also without borders. So please let us be humble and respectful when we listen to what such witnesses can convey to us, because they will be very helpful for the work that we all must do here. And lastly, as regards Mr. Jena, a well-known expert on Cambodia, who would challenge his quality, the quality of his expertise, uh, because he can explain to us how the regime in which our client was uh, both, as he said, uh, an actor and a hostage of the crimes perpetrated. Uh, he, that, that witness will be an expert to, to tell us about how this regime worked. Please, uh, co-prosecutors, do not prevent us from speaking to the substance of the debate. Do not prevent us from calling to a testimony uh, to testify people who can talk about the childhood of Doric. Please uh, keep in mind just this one major question. Have you ever seen a child who in his childhood or her childhood was dreaming of one day becoming an executioner? And are you, is this debate without any relevance to you or interest to you? Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Monsieur Roux. Uh, I just uh, need an opportunity to ask the President if he wishes to deliberate on a matter.
Yes, uh, this is the point <coughs> at which the trial chamber uh, anticipated holding a closed session uh, which would enable it to speak more openly with the lawyers uh, for all parties concerning um, witness lists. Rather than do that at this stage of the day, the President has indicated that we will um, finish the hearing now. We will resume tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, and at that stage it will be a closed session. This means that members of the public in the public part of the court will be able to be in the courtroom but will not be able to hear what is being said. Following that private session, which I anticipate will last at least half an hour, it's very likely that the President will wish to retire to deliberate, uh, and then the trial chamber will resume in open session. Oh, the President, thank you, Madam Judge. Uh, now it's the time to have a private session, but because it's almost end of the session, we only have 15 minutes left. We won't be able to hold a private session. Therefore, the trial chamber declares adjournment to this afternoon session. Uh, and we will resume the session again at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So I would like to invite all the participants and civil, all the parties who wish to attend the parties tomorrow, please uh, return to the courtroom before 9 a.m. And the trial chamber will retreat for the deliberation on the issue of the witnesses raised by the co-lawyer of the accused. The security take the accused back to the detention cell and return the accused back tomorrow morning before 9 a.m. สมใจสาธารณชนครับชาวสมมติคนบ้างสมใจ